I haven't skipped through anything on the video. I just want to show you this first before I show you how to do it. This is the bib of the overalls or the dungarees. And I'm hoping that you can tell this is narrower at the top than it is at the bottom. You start at the top and you work your way down and as you go down it gets wider. This is how I want my overalls. I, I, call, them, I call them overalls. We'll just call them that for the video. And I wanted mine wider at the bottom. So this would be where your waist is, just here. I wanted it wider at the bottom than I did at the top. When I showed my friend Jessica, she said... They're supposed to be the same width. You're supposed to have the same here as you do down there. And I said, but yeah, my overalls that I have are wider down here than they are at the top. And she's like, well, mine aren't. So you can do it either way. Decide how wide you want yours and you can continue the whole way down without increasing. So you could have yours completely straight. Let's just pretend that that's completely straight on the edge or you're going to have it get wider as you go down. So this is, on me, this here, this corner here, it's sort of where my hips are, like my hip bone. It goes out to about there. But like I said, if you want yours completely straight, then I'm going to show you how to do that. But I'm also going to show you how to make it so it's increased. Look at all these ends. Oh my goodness. That's the joys of changing colour every row. So like I said, you can have it as a square or a rectangle, depending on how long you want your bib. Um, or you can have it whatever shape that is with the crook, with the, not the crooked, the sides that get larger. You could also make a grainy square. So let's pretend you want yours with straight edges. We'll just pretend that that has straight edges. And we'll also pretend that that's a square. I know it's not square, but we'll pretend. So you could do a granny square, you could start in the middle and you could just keep going until it gets larger and just keep trying it on yourself. It, if it's going to fit you, it's going to be obviously if it's a square, it's going to be the same length on either side. But that's another way that you can do it. But I wanted mine to look like the skirt so it sort of all continues down instead of having the square. But like I said, that's up to you. You can do it that way. But yes, I'm going to show you how to do this bit, but I just wanted to show you before we got started that you don't have to have with the wider as it like as it goes down getting wider. You can just have it regular and have straight sides. Just for you, Jess. Jess, you can make it with the straight sides. Now we want to measure where we want our bib to sit. So I've stuck some pins in just on the shirt from here to here. And that's approximately where I want my bib to come on me. This mannequin is not the same size as me, so I will have different measurements. So you're going to measure where you want your bib to come to. If you want it to come a little bit higher, say if you want it to come up to your neck up there, just measure from how far apart you want your, your bib to go. And if you want it to go straight down, so you want the straight-sided one, then I would suggest having it come out just past uh, your nipples. I would have it just past there. And if you want it to get wider, then it doesn't have to be that wide at the top because it does increase out as we go down. So it'll increase out that way. But that's pretty much where I want mine. So I hope that gives you an idea on where you would put. I mean, that's not perfect. I think that one's a bit lower down. So just measure across and that will give you an idea on where you're going to go. You can start your bib in any colour. It is completely up to you. I started mine, the one I just made, I started it in the Tiff colourway, which is the brighter blue of the colours that I have. But you can start it in any colour that you like. So make a slip knot. I've already done that. Chuck it on your hook. You know how to do that if you've got this far in the tutorial. For the bib, it is a multiple of three plus one. So if you've got this far in the tutorial, you should know what multiples are. That means we make three chains. Is this wide enough for our bib? Uh, no. So we go again. One, two, three. One, two, three. Wide enough? Nope. Keep going. And you keep going until you get the measurement that I told you to take across 
uh, your chest area, sort of up near your neck. You keep going until you've got that measurement. I'm just going to pretend that this is my measurement. It's really easy for me to fit this much crochet in the screen. It's really hard to fit more than that. But it's going to be the same. It's, it's just the it's just the size. This could be for a doll maybe. Okay, so we've done our threes and then we want to do add one. So we just put one more chain on. And we're going to double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So yarn over one two three four I've just noticed that my nails are dirty I've been in the garden and I do wash my hands before every tutorial but obviously I had dirt under those and planting some veggies anyway back to the tutorial and we want to work one more double crochet into that same stitch because this lot of chains here counters as our first second and now we are going to put the third stitch in there We're going to skip two stitches. So we've done this one. Whoops. We've done that one there. We're going to skip two chains. So one, two. And in the third chain, we're going to work three double crochets. This is pretty much the same. I think it's, I think it's exactly the same. Do you know what? It's been like three weeks since, since I filmed the skirt at the beginning. So I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> It's been too long. Skip two chains, so one, two, and into the third we're going to work three double crochet. I'm going to do this all the way across. So pause the video and I'll see you when we are at the end of our work. We are up to the last chain, so we're going to work three double crochet in there. You may have already done that because you know what to do. Alright, I'm literally going to stick with the same colour because I'm actually going to pull this out. I don't obviously need this. It's just a little sample piece. If you are going to change colour, you are going to change colour. I'm not going to change colour. So now we want to chain up three. And turn our work around and into the space here we are going to work three double crochet so the first couple of rows or so is just it does work straight We're going to do this all the way across so pause the video and see when we are at the end when we get to the end we are need to mirror what we just did so we've got a one stitch on the end there even though it's chained it's got one stitch on the end uh, sorry at the start and then on the end we are going to do one stitch so we just want to do one double crochet into the top of that very last stitch so i think that was like a chain yeah it was a chain from the start so into the top of there we are going to work three stitches. Try and go through two loops if you can, just makes it more secure. So we're just going to work a double crochet into there. And that just um, mirror images what we did on the other end. So because we did one stitch here and we've got three stitches down there, if you've made my the straight granny, I can't remember what I've called the pattern. I'll put a picture on the screen anyway. If you've made this project, insert photo, yeah. <laughs> uh, you've, you've done this before. So because we've got three stitches here, we need one stitch there and on the next row we're going to need three stitches. So it alternates between three on the end and one on the end. So if you've got one below, you know the next one should be three. We're going to chain three and when we work out increasing, we can only work it when we need to do three stitches into the space, uh, sorry, two stitches into the space, but we're going to have three to start the row. So remember how I said you've got three stitches there, you've got one stitch there, the next row has to have three stitches. If you're doing the version with no increasing, you are only going to work two stitches into there. If you're doing the version that's increasing, which is I'm doing right now, we're going to work three stitches into this space. 
and we're going to have a total of four stitches in that space. But what happens when we come back on the next row, we're going to work an, a group of three into there. So if you're not doing any increasing, you're going to look like this, and you're going to have a chain three or a substitute stitch there. Could be a standing double crochet if you, if you choose so. And then two stitches into that space. If you're choosing the increase, so it's going to get wider as it gets it goes along, you're going to have an extra double crochet and you'll have three stitches into that space. And then we're going to work across and work three double crochets in each space. So it's only on the end stitch if you're doing, or end space, sorry, if you're doing increasing that we have, it looks like we've got four stitches, which we do, but it kind of looks different on the next row because we work into it. Just trust me. I'm a crochet who can't keep her loops on her hook. So I'm just working across. I'll just keep the camera going. So when we come to the end, if you're doing the straight edge, so no increasing, you're going to work two double crochet into there. If you're doing the increase, you're going to work three double crochet into there. So I am increasing just to show you. So I'm going to do three. If you're not increasing, you're only going to have two. Into this last stitch here, we're going to work one double crochet. And this is for both of the versions, like increasing or not increasing. In that last stitch there at the top of the chain, at the top of the chain, one, two, three, we're going to work a double crochet. You could work it into that space. I don't know why. I just prefer to work it into the chain. There's no answer for that. I just, that's how I do it. <laughs> so it's going to look like we've got four stitches on the end if we're increasing. If, woo, if you're not increasing, come back. Come back. Oh, there we go. Where was I? If it, I don't even know why I was talking. But I think I was saying if you've got four on the end, you're increasing. If you've got three, you're not increasing. Okay, so if we are... Increasing, we're going to do a chain three regardless of what you're doing anyway, so we'll do that. If you're increasing on the sides, you're going to work three double crochet into that space. It's the space between the first lot of chains and our first double crochet there on this on here. If you are not increasing, you are going to do chain three and you won't have this gap here because we will. Okay, so you won't have, let's just say you won't have the gap there, that just keeps it easy. <laughs> so if you're not increasing, you're going to do chain three and go three double crochet into that space. And that won't increase your work. If you are increasing, we're going to add an extra lot of three stitches into here. So we need to work two double crochet in that space because our chain three counts as our first stitch and you can see that's worked into that space there. So if you didn't increase, there will only be one stitch on the end. And you will do three double crochets into there. And we do, if we are increasing, we're still doing that. It's just we had to add extra stitches for our increase on the end. I feel like I'm being very chatty. I'm sorry. So we're going to do three double crochet in each space across. I don't know what is in the air today, but my nose is so itchy. I just thought I'd share that with you because you needed to know. If you are coming along here, you're going to have three stitches on the end if you're not increasing. If you're increasing, you're going to have four stitches. Remember how we did four if we were increasing? So in the space, so this is for you increasing, in the space between the chain on the end and the last double crochet we have there, we're going to do three double crochet in that space. You just need to pull them apart so you can create the space. So three double crochet. If you are not increasing, you are going to put one double crochet 
I'll just pull it back out so I can show you what to do. So if you're not increasing, you will have three stitches on the end and you're just going to double crochet into that very last stitch, which is the top of the chain three or alternate chain three that you had from the previous row. Because it needs to go three stitches, next row one stitch on the end, three stitches, this is if you're not increasing, three, one, three, one. And it does that as we go up, okay? I hope I'm not confusing you. But if we are doing the increases, we don't get that three, one, three, one. Chain up three. You want to keep your three, one, three, one, or one, three, one, three, depending on how you want to say it, continuing on if you're not increasing. We still want to do it if we are increasing, except when we do the increase, it's going to throw it out. Because we are increasing, we can't keep the one, three, one, three repeat going completely because see how we just did three that was to go into the increase we kind of don't get that but after we've done that last stitch we just need to keep it going because you're going to do a couple of rows where we're not increasing so if you're doing the increase version <laughs> there are a couple of rows where we're not increasing we don't increase every row otherwise it will get way too wide way too quick so we've got three stitches on the end we're back to just regular now three stitches on the end we need one so we're going to leave that one by itself and in the next space we're going to work three double crochet. All I can suggest to you is listen to what I'm telling you for your version and ignore the other one. Because if you listen to both it's probably going to sound like mumbo jumbo. So we're going to do three double crochet into every stitch across. No, we're not. <laughs> God, don't listen to me. In every space across. So because we've done our increasing, if you're doing that version, we should now have more shells across the row. I'm not going to count them because I know there are. I think we've got two more because we did one on each end. We're going to go across. And we're almost to the end. My yarn ball wants to come in and say hi. So when we get to the end, we want to keep the three one three one thing going. So we've got three down here because we're just doing regular rows. We're not doing any increased rows at the moment. So regular. So we've got three down here. So we want to do one on the next one, and we're going to do it into the top of that very last stitch. If we're doing the increase rows, we're going to do four rows of normal and then our fifth row is our increase row. So where's my increasing? Here. You can see that I've got three stitches and then one on the end. So that's one, two, chain three, turn our work. And because we've got the three, one, we want to do three on the end. So we've done one stitch. We need two more in that space. And three double crochets in each space across. So pause the video and I'll meet you when we are at the other end. When we get to the end, we continue on with our one, three, one, three. So we've got uh, three, one, and then we need three, so we're going to, we're just making sure it's the same at the other end as well. So if it starts with a three, it'll end with a three. So we're doing two double crochet in the end space. And then one double crochet into the top of the chain there. Whoops, a daisy, come on. So again, we want to continue on with our edges. We're doing that one, three configuration. So because we've got uh, three and then one and then three, then one, we know we have to skip across to this next space. 
what color are you making yours? I would really love to know. Are you doing a scrap buster or are you planning as you go? Mine was a stash buster, but I did plan as I go, as I went. Uh, the great English there. So now we're going to do three double crochets in each space across. So pause the video and I'll see it when we're at the end. We started our row with one stitch and if you look on this end it goes one three so we know that it's going to end on one stitch and it also matches up with our configuration of the one three business. So in that last top of that last stitch we are going to work a double crochet And you should be able to see that it's gradually getting wider. We have four rows in between our increasing on the bib. So we've done our four rows because our increase was there. If you're doing your increases, of course. So one, two, three, four. Turn it around, chain three. So if you're working an increase, we're going to do that now. If you're not, you're just going to do two stitches into that space there and continue across. If you're working an increase, you're going to work three double crochets into that space. That's our increase because we have our first stitch there and then three double crochets. But like I said, if you're not increasing, you only have two double crochets in that space. And we're going to work three double crochets all the way across. And I'll meet you when we are at the end of the row. Pause the video and I will see you there. When we get to the end, if you're working no increasing, you are going to put two double crochet into the space and one into the end stitch. If you're working an increase, we are going to work three double crochets into this space and then one into the end stitch. So just to repeat that, if you are doing an increase, you will have three stitches on the end. It'll be two into the space and one on the end. And if you're doing increasing, you'll have three double crochets into that space and then one on the end. So we are continuing on. If you're making the straight edge one, you can go for it. You do not need to keep watching this bit because this bit is just for the, this next row is for the increases. Uh, and yeah, so you can just watch this or have it playing in the background, whatever but you are just going to go for it and create your front bib. Uh, it's up to you how many rows you want to do, totally is. Uh, I used, I'm using a 3.75 crochet hook. I have loose tension. I'm using a DK, an eight ply or a number three weight yarn. And I have done 32 rows on my bib. I know someone's going to ask me that, so I thought I would do it right now. If you're doing the increasing, we've got four stitches. So between that chain three, which is the first one, and the second one, which is a double crochet, just there, in that space, we're going to work two double crochet. Because the chain three counts as our first stitch for a total of three. Into each space across, we are going to work three double crochet. Pause the video and I will see you when we're at the end of the row. I'm at the end of the row and we have four stitches. We have three double crochet and then a chain on the end. So in between the chain and the last double crochet in that space there, we're going to work three double crochet. And remember, this is only for the people that are doing the increasing on the, on the bib part. So that would have increased there and we've got an increase there. When we add our edging, we're just gonna single crochet along the edge. It will, it will all straighten up. You can see it kind of looks a bit wonky. But trust me when I say, it is all gonna neaten up. For the increases, now you are going to repeat that. I'll just turn it around so you can see it. So we've got our, where's our increase? Increases here. Then we've got one, two, three, four rows of crochet, just regular, no increasing. And on the fifth row, we do the chain three and three double crochet in that first space. So it creates that extra space on the end here for this group of three for the next row. So don't forget you work your increase at the beginning and the end of the row, 
And then on the next row, you have to remember to put in those increases into that end space that we've created. Otherwise, it's not worth putting the increases in because you're not going to be adding any extra groups of three. So pause the video and in the next section I will see you, you will be up to, and I'm going to remind you again, this is uh, where I said I'd remind you later on in the tutorial. I'm going to grab my skirt. So the top of my skirt, I started with the coral. So this is if you're doing a stripe version and you want your stripes to be continuous all the way down. If you're doing a scrap one, it's, this is totally not going to matter. If you're doing all the one color, it's not going to matter either what color you finish on. It is only going to matter if you're doing stripes like this. When we, do, I've actually got to pull out this dark, darker blue row here because that's where we've got to join and I've actually done one too many. I've actually got to pull that out um, because I will tell you why. You, if you're doing stripes, you're going to go to your stripe sequence and you're going to see the first color that you use is coral for me personally. Coral, I've used there. You're going to come down and go for your stripe sequence until you find coral again. This is if you've planned it and it's striped every row. So coral is there. The color that you want to join with is the color before that. So for me, it's this darker blue, which is the lake by Fiberific. And then the next row before that is the Tiff by Fiberific. Love this colour, it's one of my favourites. So what we want to do is we're going to finish on the bright blue. We're going to finish on the lake, which is two colours before the one we started our skirt with. So this is the colour we started our skirt with, this is the colour before it, and then this one is the colour before that. So two colours before, so one, two. Finish your bib on this second colour. Not the one just before the coral. So I'm actually going to pull this row out because I realised after I'd done it that I didn't need it there yet. Oh no! I'm pulling out all the crochet. So I can pull this out and show you what it's going to do. We're going to come down our work. This is the bib. And then finish on this colour here with Shamiz Tiff. And when we join, we are going to use this colour to join. So that's the colour before the colour I started my skirt with. So colour I started my skirt with there, to go down and find it, it's here. The colour I started before that, I did before that, is this blue. So this is this colour here and that's what we're going to join with. So you are going to finish your bib on the colour before that, which is that bright blue, which is what I've done on my bib section here. Because the next part in the video, I'm going to show you how to join, and it's going to be this colour here, which will go after the bright blue there, and then before that one, and everything is going to be perfect. So I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video clip. So pause the video and continue doing whatever you have to do before I started talking about that part. <laughs> Another thing too, if you're making a granny square then and you're going to do it with stripes like this, you want to finish the same way. So you're going to finish on two colours before, like what I said before, but it's just going to be on a granny square. It's going to be the same. Uh, pause the video and I'll see you there.